Hey folks, Wild Tofurky 101 here and welcome to another video. If you're familiar with my channel, you know that I've done a couple of Pokemon Challenge videos. Today's video is no exception, however, it's a bit of a special tribute. If you're familiar with stand-up comedy, you'll probably be aware that we have lost quite a few notable comedians recently, one of whom, Norm MacDonald, was one we lost to cancer this time last year. For those of you not familiar with Norm's work, he was a Canadian stand-up comedian who was known for his old turns of phrases, his deliberate ways of extending punchlines, and his fearlessness to commit to jokes which didn't always get the best reaction. But this was all part of his highlighted charm, evidenced by his appearances on the major late-night talk shows, Conan, David Letterman especially, his tenure on Saturday Night Live doing Weekend Update, and his much popular YouTube series, aptly titled Norm MacDonald Live. Amongst other TV and movie credits, he had a self-titled Norm show, which I'm dedicating this challenge to. In one episode, Norm battles a young child with his Butterfree and Squirtle against the child's Charmander and Pikachu, which of course the latter too has a respective type advantage against the former. Seeing as this episode was aired in 1999, we'll use Pokemon Yellow for the basis of this challenge. However, this isn't like the challenges you've seen before. We're doing this challenge with Nuzlocke rules, appropriately titled Normlock. The rules for this challenge are as follows. We can only use Butterfree and Squirtle in battle once we catch them. Painted Pokemon are deposited immediately, and all painted Pokemon means the run is over. We cannot overlevel past the next gym's cap, or the Elite Four's highest, set mode in battle, and no items in battle. Now in Pokemon Yellow, we can get Squirtle as a gift for beating the third gym, and Caterby can be caught fairly early in Viridian Forest, so this makes sense to use Pikachu until then. By beating our rival, this changes what our rival's Eevee will evolve into. If we lost this battle, it becomes Vaporeon, which, if we used Pikachu, would have been super effective. If we had won, then lost the second battle on Route 22, we get Flareon. But if we win both, we would get Jolteon, which is actually super effective against both our teams. Butterfree is a pretty underwhelming fully evolved Pokemon, and Squirtle is a very basic first form starter, both of whom are outsped by a super effective Jolteon, but they have some interesting synergy with their moves, which may make this possible. After getting Pokeballs, we can go up to Viridian Forest and then catch our Caterpie. The rules state that we can only catch the first, but luckily they're easy enough to be caught in the wild. I named Caterpie Crackhaw, one of Norm's favourite words. Now, training Caterpie isn't the easiest task, as it is weak until we evolve into Metapod at level 7 and Butterfree at level 10. We have to be careful of Pidgeys in this area, as they are faster and we can't readily escape from them, and can lose the run and has to restart from the beginning. But eventually, we get Crackhaw up to level 7, where it evolves into a stiff-looking metapod. Don't make it sound like a fucking fat, plumpy, delicious cock. <laughs> I wasn't. Anyway, metapod is more bulkier, and alert hard, which will be a help. It is also 9 special and 11 speed. Good for this early on in the game. 9-11. <laughs> oh, Norm, don't be so insensitive. Anyway, after a bit more grinding, metapod evolves into Butterfree at level 10, where it loads 50 power Confusion, which is the key to the next few battles. Confusion makes pretty short work of our rival on Route 22. Had his Spearow used Peck, or his Eevee used Tackle or Sand Attack at all, it could have been a tricky battle, but this ensures we battle a Jolteon at the end. Confusion came in at the right moment too, as the level cap of Rock is 12, and neutral special moves work well against low special Rock slash Ground types. Although we did have to stall out Bide with Brock's Onyx at the end, in which String Shot worked a treat. For winning, we get the aforementioned Bide TM, which will come in handy, I think. Coming up next is Mount Noon and the next gym in Cerulean. And the first big challenge coming up is how to get past Misty's level 20 on Starmie. A super strong and fast Pokemon with Bubble Beam. We do learn Sleep Powder at level 15, but it's not 100% accurate. But before we can even get to that, we lose the run already because of a rocket gun sand attacking Sandshrew and his Rattata. Great. After a few wipes where we lose Caterpie to either the first battle or the first Pidgey after getting it, we eventually get back to Mount Moon and I skip this trainer, obviously. At the end of... I went to Brookback Mount... No, Mount Moon. We have a battle with Jesse and James, but as two of their three Pokemon are weak to Psychic, Crackhaw makes pretty short work of them. On the other side is the aforementioned Cerulean City, where Butterfree is at level 21. I make sure to level it up high enough where it can level up mid-battle as per the Nuzlocke rules. You just have to be at or below the level cap before the battle. Misty leads with Staryu, and Crackhaw's Confusion does half, 
As Misty just wastes the next defend on it, so another can take it out. Her ace, her level 21 Starmie is last, and I talk crack or buy that we got from the Rock Gym for this battle alone. Starmie is faster, but once again, Misty just wastes the next defend on it, so we land the bide unscathed. Now, whatever damage Starmie does to us, we can deal it back double after three turns, assuming that we don't get KO'd, of course. It lands two tackles and a water gun to below half, which is perfect, because we can land double damage to one hit KO it for the win. Up next is the rival battle, and he does have some tricky Pokemon, with Spearow with super effective Peck, and a sand attacking Sandshrew, which can be a problem with only one Pokemon. We did miss our first two sleep powders, however, taking off one quarter of our health from Peck, but we do land our sleep powders and take out his whole team in a few confusions. Easy to see how this can be shut down, though. After clearing out Nugget Bridge, we really don't have much room to level up, as the next gym is Lieutenant Surge's level 28 Raichu, which has super effective Thunderbolt and Mega Punch and Mega Kick, which we really don't have a lot of margin of error in making mistakes. But before we even have to worry about that, we have to battle our rival on board the SSN, and his team hasn't evolved that much, but Sandshrew now has 70 power high critical hit slash if we're not careful. However, similar to last time, apart from some early troubles with Spiro, Sleep Powder comes in clutch for more of the threatening members of his team, allowing us to sweep his team above half health. One of the biggest threats in the Electric Gym, and I really don't have a reliable way to approach this battle, but I leave with our only strategy. Strangely enough, Surge's Raichu opens with Growl, which doesn't affect special moves. We do land the Sleep Powder, and I tried to snort it by using Supersonic twice, but it missed, and Raichu wakes up immediately, but continues to use Growl. So I start landing in hits after we put it to sleep, which don't do a whole lot, but we do land confusion surprisingly enough, and Raichu stayed asleep anyway, so we do take it down eventually to win our third badge. Probably much easier than it had anywhere right to be, but I'll take it. After beating Surge, we can finally get our other encounter, Squirtle. I name it Scuttlehead, or Scuthead as it doesn't fit. I teach Bubble Beam and Dig to Squirtle as it can learn it surprisingly enough, and after navigating through Rock Tunnel, we arrive in Lavender Town, where there is a lot of cool stuff we can get. We can head to Celadon City to the department store, we can get access to Saffron City to get the TM for Psychic, and the Ice Beam TM, which we attack to Crackhaw and Scudhead, respectively. The next gym is the Grass Gym, and this is a challenge, as Erica's Grass and Poison types are super effective against our Water and Bug types, respectively. But we have Psychic and Ice types, to counteract that, so let's see how we go. Erica leads with a level 30 Tangler and I leave with Crackle. I put it to sleep immediately, after which Psychic does like nothing but does get the special drop. In hindsight, I should have kept Butterfree in, but I switch into Scudhead to take it out with Ice Beam. Next is a big threat, Weepin Bell, and anticipating the Razor Leaf, I switch back into Crackle as it's double resisted, but it goes for Acid instead, which brings us to 15 HP, and then of course we miss Sleep Powder and get taken down immediately. Rest in peace, Crackhaw. I send in Scudded for the Ice Beam, but we get paralyzed immediately, immobilized, and absolutely demoralized by Razor Leaf. Thus ends the run, but I know this is worth another try. After a few more resets, we finally get back to Erica's battle, and I have a plan that just might work. I lead in with Crackhaw and go in with Sleep Powder, and decide to stay in this time, and try for the special drop in Confusion with Psychic and Confusion, respectively. We don't get either, but Tangela can't act as we reapply sleep. I decide to use Reflect, I talk Crackle beforehand, and take Tangela out to prepare for Weepin Bell. Now Asa doesn't do as much, and is a two-shot, and same with her last Pokemon Vileplume, and we're only brought to half health by the end. Finally, we can make some progress. Since the next level cup is 50, we can overlevel to the point where the next few mandatory battles are relatively simple, such as the Lavender Town rival fight, Jesse and James and Giovanni. However, we have to be careful with the 5th and 6th gyms as they are both capped at 50. To prepare for both those gyms, I decide Silco is a good place for levels as it reminds me of another building that was taken over by terrorism. I wasn't. Anyway, since we're over leveled, the trainers in Silco are manageable, but at one point Scuttlehead was left with 2 HP from a critical confusion so we can't take any trainer for granted. The rival fight in Sylphco is becoming especially dangerous. Scudhead accounts for his first two Pokemon due to the type advantage, and with Cloyster, Surf does a little before we get hit by Supersonic. I switch into Krakor, anticipating a water move, but we get hit with Aurora Beam for over half. We do land a Sleep Powder, however, and get back above half from Mega Drain. I repeat the same process with one of his big threats, Kadabra, 
and were able to sleep store and take it down gradually. His biggest threat, however, Jolteon is faster, but luckily no crit on his Thundershock, and we're about half health, and we do land the Sleep Powder and take it down in three attacks due to a crit. Solid, but can turn ugly if Sleep Powder misses. After tearing through the remains of Jesse, James, and Giovanni, well that sounds terrible, and restoring safety at Silphco, we return to Fuchsia City for the fifth badge. However, close to the level cap, as we have to battle Sabrina after, who has the same level. Crackle Psychic makes quick work of Koga's team, and we took no damage in the process. With Sabrina's battle, I upgrade Butterfree's moveset, including a move which I think will give us a chance of completing this run, Double Team. I also teach it Swift for a physical move, and Butterfree doesn't have the best attack, but neither does Abra's evolution line in defense. With this, we're able to stack double teams and sleep powders fairly safely on Abra, and we took no damage. It obviously works a lot better when you're faster. Jolteon will still be an issue, however. After making our way back to Pallet Town, the Fire Gym awaits. Now, with a water type, you'd think this wouldn't be a problem. However, Squirtle is slow compared to Blaine's super fast fire types. We have Takedown and Stomp, which can cause serious damage. I still open with Krakor for the outspeed and sleep powder, but miss, and Ninetales Flamethrower does 107 damage. So I have to switch into Scuthead, but we get confused, of course. We hit ourselves and lose a bit of damage to Quick Attack, but we do land a Surf to get Ninetales to the red. It keeps trying to confuse us when we were already confused, but we snap out and body slam it for the KO. Rapidash goes for Growl, which doesn't affect water moves, so it's also a one-hit KO, and last is his big threat, Arcanine. I have no chance to continue with Scuthead. However, Arcanine went for Fire Blast twice, which brings us to 17 HP, but two serves do the job. Takedown would have taken us down easily. Seventh badge, done. Finally, the last gym. Similar to the Fire Gym, You'd think that uh, Giovanni's ground gym would be easy considering we have a water type and an immunity to ground types with Butterfree. However, Nido King, Nido Queen, and Rhydon have super effective electric and rock moves. I lead in with Krakor, and since we're immune to his lead, Doug like Trio's all ground moves, we put it to sleep because of stand attack and max out our double teams, and we can take it out and Persian safely, but third is Nido Queen. And not only do we miss sleep powder, but it hits a 90% thunder through max evasion and gets the paralysis. Not good. Regardless, we do land a sleep powder, eventually risking a thunder, but it luckily missed this time. After taking Nido Queen out, Nido King, who also misses thunder, and we can put it to sleep, and I switch into Scudhead for the surf, and to not risk a four times effective rock slide from Rhydon. It wakes up, but uses a guard spec, so surf does the job. Eight badges done, but now the real challenge begins. We have one more fight before the Elite Four, and since the level cap is around 60, we can sort of over-level towards it, but our rivals still can pose a threat. Scuthead with type coverage gets through his first three Pokemon, taking a bit of damage from Cloyster before overcoming it, and after getting Kadabra to half health, a switch into Crackwall got the job done, and we got lucky with Paralysis against his Jolteon, and the missing Thunder after we did get paralysed three times in a row to take it down. All that's left is the Elite Four, and the level cap is Lance's level 62 Dragonite. As I mentioned before, I do aim for about level 60 as we'll level up along the way. We do have decent type coverage for most of what we'll be fighting, but Lorelei may be a problem, and certainly Jolteon right at the end. To prepare, I teach Scuthead Mimic and Toxic for a particular reason. Before we begin, just a quick word about Norm. Norm was a very special comedian who I deeply admired. He had unique and special qualities that are very hard to find in any comedian, such as timing over his use of old-timer phrases, his deliberate stuttering and explaining of jokes, and the punchlines, whilst deviating from them were a testament to the craft Norm provided. His fearless tenure on Saturday Night Live, and his memorable appearances on Conan, David Letterman, and his radio appearances on Dennis Miller were legendary, and he always maintained that smile which exuded confidence, and you can tell that he was a very much loved figure in comedy and the world. His YouTube series cemented the above qualities with a number of memorable guest interviews. They say only the good die young, and Norm is a testament to that adage. Without ado, let's do this for Norm. First is Ice Trainer Lorelei, and she's one which I'm worried about as we have no real good answer for her. However, I have one idea which might work. She sends out Dugong, and I send out Scudhead. I toxic Dugong immediately to target a rest, but of course it's at full health on its first turn. I go for Dig for damage on Toxic, but Dugon goes to Rest to cure Poison immediately. After a few turns of Dig and Toxic damage, 
and thus being brought low by takedown, I switch into Crack Hall, which does land the Sleep Powder. I use a few double teams, then two hit Keo Dugong. We miss Sleep Powder on Cloyster, but it does miss Ice Beam, thank God. We land our next one, but it wakes up, of course. Psychic almost KOs, and Ice Beam does about a third, which was less than I was expecting. Then we finish it. Third is Slowbro, and here's my plan. I taught Butterfree Mimic for the Elite Four, so we can use Amnesia. In Generation 1, Mimic allows you to choose a move of the enemy Pokemon, as opposed to later generations, which only copies the last move by the opponent. Because of this, Generation 1 Amnesia is powerful, as it increases special as a whole, attack and defense, meaning we can become a special powerhouse, taking down the rest of Lorelei's team, but not before being at max evasiveness, and we had to be lucky with Lapras's Blizzard that missed, as we got a crit on Psychic that bypassed our staff increases. Close one, but we got through. Next is Bruno, and Scud has more than equipped to deal with the fighting in Rock Type or Surf, taking minimal damage along the way. Third is Agatha, and we do have type effectiveness against her, but she has fast ghost and poison types, so we do have to be careful. I lead with Crackhaw and open with Sleep Powder. Now, it wasn't until I looked that it was her last Gengar who has Dream Eater, so it's not viable this turn for Mimic. Regardless, I use Confused Ray as it wakes up. Eventually, it does stay asleep, and Psychic does more than half, to which Agatha switches into Golbat, to which, thanks to a critical hit, we can one shot it and finish off her first Gengar, too. Her Haunter is almost a one-shot, but a Super Potion doesn't save it, so another one does the trick. Fourth is Arbok, which does have Glare, so I switch into Scudded to take it and start using Dig, but we get paralyzed, so I opt for Surf instead for good damage, then switch back into Crackhaw, knowing Arbok wouldn't go for Glare, and Acid does about a third. One Psychic does the trick, and last is a level 60 Gengar, and it is where this gets tricky, as it is faster and lands a 60% Hypnosis, not good. Knowing that Dream Eater will do a lot of damage and will probably KO, I go into Scuthead and even though it's paralyzed, it does actually help because it can't be put to sleep due to paralysis, meaning she can only use Psychic or Confuse Ray, but that is still a problem, of course. But luckily Gengar tries to confuse us before we snap out, but we can't execute a jig due to paralysis, but does go for Dream Eater whilst we're paralyzed twice, so we can land a dig and a surf for a close victory. Next is Lance, and he is a problem too. He has some powerful moves that are super effective against our team, but if we have the right strategy, we may be okay. Lance sends out his Gyarados, and I send out Scudhead. Gyarados instantly opens with a massive Hyper Beam for over half, as we get a Toxic off, and during Gyarados' turn to recharge, I switch into Crack Whore to get the double team off, but it still lands a Hyper Beam again for well over half health. I had to risk a second double team because Psychic wouldn't probably two hit KO with poison damage. However, it just goes for Dragon Rage after Psychic, which does a third, bringing us to 44 HP before we can finish it off. Next is Lance's first Dragonair, which has Thunderbolt, but we do land the Sleep Powder and get a few double teams in before two-shotting it with Psychic. Lance's second Dragonair, however, has Ice Beam, and by putting it to sleep, using Mimic to steal Ice Beam and max out our evasiveness, we can sweep the rest of Lance's team, where we had to dodge a wing attack from Aerodactyl. Finally, it's the Pokemon Champion Blue. He leads off with a level 61 Sand Slash as I open with Crackhaw. We miss Sleep Powder twice as it hits two Poison Stings, Slash would have done lots more damage, and we put it to sleep on the third try and use Double Team. This is the only way we'll have a chance against Jolteon. We still miss Sleep Powder on the follow-up, but I'm hoping it's the only time we miss as it has been absolutely clutch. We mimic Earthquake and one hit KO Sand Slash with Psychic. Next is Alakazam, and we get a crit from Earthquake to bring it to red, as it misses Kinesis and a follow-up does the job. Third is Exeggutor, and Psychic and Earthquake won't do much, and I deliberated for a while, but take a risk and switch into Scudded for the Ice Beam. We do get seated, however, and our second Ice Beam gets the freeze, making Exeggutor unable to act, so I am safe to switch back into Crackhaw to reset the max evasiveness, and then two Psychics take it down. We may have max evasiveness, but Blue's last three Pokemon are a major problem. Ice, Fire, and Electric. He sends out Cloyster, and I go for Psychic knowing it has low special, but we don't get a KO, but it misses Aurora Beam, so he can take it out next turn. Second from last is Ninetales, who we miss Sleep Powder on, but it does miss Fire Spin. Two Psychics take it down, and we mimic Confuse Ray to deal with his last Pokemon, Jolteon. 
My confusion is immediately as it misses Thunder Wave. Then it breaks for your confusion, but misses Thunder, thank God, so he can land the Sleep Powder. And with four Psychics remaining, it's a race to see how much they would do, doing about a quarter each. We get Jolty onto a quarter. It breaks confusion again, but misses Thunder a second time. And we get over the line with a final Psychic. We did it. We beat a Normlock Pokemon Yellow with Norm's team and at a level cap. That's the first Nozlocke style challenge I've done, so I had fun doing it, and I hope you'd enjoy watching, and I'm hoping to do more of these challenges in the near future. Like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'm Wild to Furky 101. See you next.